Welcome back to the Universal Audio YouTube channel. I'm Steve Kinney, producer, engineer, and content creator based out of Nashville, Tennessee. Today, we're diving into vocal production workflows using Universal Audio's Luna, Apollo, and Volt. We'll record through a couple of Universal Audio mics, including the Bach 187, the Sphere DLX, and we'll shape and polish our performances with a bit of comping, time correction with warp, and tuning all inside of Luna. Let's get started. Today, we're using the Universal Audio Bach 187. Now, this is one of the smoothest sounding FET microphones I've ever used. Now, I like to pair this microphone with the clarity and punch of the API Vision Channel Strip Extension. I also like to have a simple monitoring chain for the artist, so I'm gonna call up the classic 1176 and LA 2A combo for some dynamics control. Now, I don't wanna commit to these just yet, so I'll load these into the insert slots in the Luna Mixer and bypass them for now until we've set our preamp level. Now, sometimes when tracking vocals in a vocal booth, while the recording sounds great, in the headphones for the artist, it can get a little too sterile and hard to interpret as the performer. So I'm gonna add two buses, send unity gain, and call up some spatial effects to give our artist a little more natural sounding recording environment. And we also wanna be sure to assign each of these buses to be arm enabled. Okay, now we're ready to get a level and dial in the rest of our chain. Since this is a lead vocal and I want to nail this setting, I'm gonna engage auto gain, which is gonna take all of the guesswork out of setting the level. All I have to do in Luna is click auto gain, set my target peak level, and listen threshold level, and then have the artist run through a few seconds of the performance. I'll usually make sure that this performance is at the most energetic part of the track, like a chorus or a bridge. Okay, Katrina, we're gonna call up a chorus here and I'll get you to sing along as we set a level for you. All right, here we go. The American dream ain't nowhere I'd rather be. Donut and sweet iced tea. Nobody counting calories. Got everything we almost need. Okay, now that the level is perfect, let's give it just a touch of extra analog character. I'm gonna drive the pre just a little higher and compensate the output down by roughly a similar amount. Now remember to use your ears at this stage. There's certainly a point where you can go too far. That said, we're now ready to move on and dial in our compression. Since I'm tracking and not mixing, I still want my singer to feel her dynamics in her headphones, so I'll aim to gently control the dynamics of her performance without completely squashing it. Using the 1176 Rev-E, I'll shave off only a few dBs with a fast attack and a medium fast release. Next, I've added the LA-2A here because of its slower attack, which lets some of those initial consonants and transients through, which can help the vocal to feel more natural. And I'm only hitting about two to three dB of gain reduction, just enough to smooth out the peaks without clamping down too hard. Before we're ready for a first pass, we have to build a cue mix for our singer, and Luna's inline cue mix section makes building a headphone mix incredibly fast. To build a headphone mix quickly, I'm gonna send unity gain of the vocal itself to our singer's cue mix by option clicking. Next, I'll use the Apollo's talkback mic to communicate with Kat in the booth as I bring up the main mix of our playback track. Now, I'll do the same thing for the reverb, the delay, and the click track, and now we're ready to record. Before we move on to tracking any sort of harmonies or background vocals, we need to make sure that we track those parts to a pocketed, tight, and tuned vocal. So we've got a little bit of cleanup work to do. First, I'm going to comp the vocal. I'll create a new version using the shortcut Control backslash and rename it comp. Next I'll go through each version and find and choose the best performance, copying and pasting up to the new comp version lane. Now this part can be quick and dirty. Once we've composited a performance, we're gonna need to clean it up. Now normally you might like to do this edit with snap on. In this case, to get accurate fades and cuts, I'm gonna disable snap temporarily with the shortcut shift backslash. Now I'll highlight the sections of the track that are dead air and press delete. And to add accurate fades quickly, 
I'll click up to the start of each phrase and press D on the keyboard. For the ends of phrases, I'll use the G key. Okay, now we've got this great comp here and it's very clean, but I'm noticing that there's this one spot that is just a little rushed. Nobody count them calories. So to tighten that up, I'm gonna add a warp. Just below the track header, I'm gonna click on view clips and change it to view warps. While I'm here, I'm also gonna ensure that I'm using the monophonic warping algorithm found at the bottom of the track header in the timeline view. To warp audio effectively, we need anchor points in and out of the section that we're working with. I'll start by adding an anchor point ahead of the phrase and after the word. Finally, I'll add an anchor point just before the start of the word and I'll toggle snap on and move this handle closer to the grid. Nobody count them cat. Nobody count them calories. Now that we've tightened up this performance by comping, editing, and warping, let's look at tuning this vocal quickly so we can move on to stacking some harmonies and doubles. To tune this quickly, I'm gonna use Topline Vocal Suite. This plugin is so great, especially when you need to work fast, and it sounds fantastic. It has everything that you need for a complete vocal chain, but for right now, we're just gonna use the pitch correction, and we'll revisit the rest of Topline later in the video. To allow the pitch correction to function properly, we need to feed it a key, and if you didn't know the key, there's a really handy plugin here called Topline Key Finder. Once we call up Topline Key Finder, we're gonna play through a section of the song and then it's gonna give me some candidates as to what the key of the song is. When you have both Topline Key Finder and Vocal Suite loaded, all you have to do next is hit send and it automatically enters the top candidate into Topline's tuner. adjust the speed and depth, and we're now ready to track some BGVs. Whenever it's time to finally move to background vocals, it's usually a great idea to swap out a mic. Not only does this give you a different tonal signature, but it also captures the room tone and the transient slightly differently, which can create better depth and help the background vocals sit differently in the mix. To be sure that I check all of these boxes, I'm calling on the Sphere DLX. This is a powerhouse of a mic. Using the Sphere Mic Collection plugin, I can audition 38 different legendary mics, so I'll never run out of tonal options. To be sure I have the option of swapping out mic models in post, I'll load this plugin in an insert slot. Now to get my signal level to be optimal for the mic modeling, this time I'll use the Apollo's Auto Gain without any unison pre's loaded, and once it's done, I'm set. Now, we've went ahead and recorded a pass already with this microphone, so let's listen to how the different mic models can change the perception of the background vocal in the mix. For now, I've landed on the LD251 mic model, so let's move on to the final double. For this final harmony, I wanted to highlight how the Volt and Luna can work harmoniously together in a professional environment. The Volt features two analog mic line preamps with a vintage mode that engages an expertly designed op amp that delivers 610 style tube saturation. That makes the Volt not only a great interface, but also a great recording tool that you can use anywhere. To get my Volt working in Luna, I'll set Luna to core audio mode and turn my buffer to the lowest possible setting. I'll keep the Volt right next to me and engage the vintage mode and set my preamp level to where I start to hear some of the preamp saturation. Let's hear it in action. Let the American dream ain't nowhere I'd rather be. Donuts and sweet iced tea. 
Nobody counting them calories. Got everything we almost need in this triple wide reality. You and me, baby, and the baby makes three. Living the American dream. Now that our background vocals are tracked, it's time for me to get back to work and clean them up. If you'd like to review that process, use the chapter markers to jump back in this video. Now because we tracked our vocal with the API VCS extension, I can work in line within the Luna Mixer section and have instant control over some of the most essential processing moves. First, I'm going to use the high pass filter and the low pass filter section here to clean up the low end and round out the top end before compression. American dream ain't nowhere I'd rather be. Donut and sweet ass tea. Nobody count me in calories. Got everything we almost need. I'm also going to use the built in EQ to massage some of the lower mids. And it's triple wide reality. You and me, baby, and the baby makes three. Living the American dream. Living the American dream. Ain't nowhere I'd rather be. Donuts and sweet ice tea. Nobody can. Next, let's pull up Top Line Vocal Suite. Now the great thing about Topline is that it has everything you need to process a vocal all in one spot. I'm going to use it to push the saturation just a touch further. Topline lets us choose between solid state and tube saturation. For this track, I want to go with the rich harmonics of tubes, so I'll gently increase the saturation until we get just a subtle lift in harmonic content. Now here's a quick tip. To figure out where it's just subtle enough, start by pushing it to where it becomes obviously apparent and then just dial it back from there, just back off. Living the American dream Ain't nowhere I'd rather be Donuts and sweet ice tea Next, I want to use the built-in gate and de -esser. The gate is designed to be simple to use and tuned for vocals with a quick attack and a relatively slow release so your audio won't just jump in or cut out unnaturally. To toggle the gate on and off, click the button above the gate slider. To increase the amount of noise suppression, drag the gate slider down. Topline's de is great. It's tuned specifically for those sharp S's and T sounds, reducing harshness in a really transparent way. The on-screen dynamics meter also gives you easy to understand feedback on what's being processed. So far, this vocal is sounding really great, but I want to give it that top end sparkle that you've heard on countless records. In top line, we can use the air processor in the EQ section. This adds clarity and sheen without adding any harshness. When engaged, we introduce that hyped multiband expansion sound often applied to vocal tracks in big studios. Living the American dream ain't nowhere I'd rather be. Donuts and sweet ice tea. Nobody count me in calories. Now that we've got our vocal dialed in, to finish the chain, I'll glue everything together using Luna's built-in summing and tape, which will let me process all of the vocals together with shared processing. First, let's create a vocal bus using the shortcut Command Shift B. I'm going to use Neve Summing to add the complex depth, character, and non-linearities of the classic 80 series console. And to push the emulation to the limits, all of this signal path will be glued together with the ATR-102 extension, giving us warmth and cohesion of a vintage analog tape machine. Now, let's listen to a quick AB. In this video, we've covered the iconic sounds of the Sphere DLX, the smooth sounds of the Bach 187, using auto gain to nail vocal recording, using Volt with Luna, and how to polish vocals in Luna with Top Line Vocal Suite. If you found this video helpful, be sure to let us know in the comments section, like, and subscribe for all things Universal Audio. See you in the next video. Cheers.